So, more about the Egyptian revolutions, plural, of the last century. I was talking about the uh, Egyptian revolution of 1952 when I was brutally interrupted by a computer malfunction. So, I was talking about the uh, revolution of 1952. This was, uh, the revolution was initially aimed at overthrowing King Farouk. King Farouk had to go, just like Mubarak. However, the movement had more political ambitions, not just the overthrow of a despot, uh, a tyrant, but it also, uh, it, soon to move, it soon moved to abolish the constitutional monarchy and the aristocracy of Egypt and Sudan, establish a republic, uh, end the British occupation of the country, get all British troops out, and secure the independence of Sudan. Hitherto governed as an Anglo-Egyptian condominium. The revolutionary government adopted a staunchly nationalist, anti-imperialist agenda, which came to be expressed chiefly through Arab nationalism and the international non-alignment. The non-aligned movement, the NAM, it's a group of states that considers themselves not aligned formally with or against any major power bloc. Uh, if you want to think of Cold War terms, it was saying that it wasn't with Russia, it wasn't with America, but now it's just saying that it's not with any major bloc. So not the Europeans, not uh, uh, Russia, and most of the people in the non-aligned movement, South America, Africa. So the revolution of Egypt, 1952, is faced with immediate threats from Western imperial powers, uh, particularly the United Kingdom. They don't like to give up their colonies. They, they're still trying to get in here and uh, control America's foreign policy, too, with uh, Tony Blair. So particularly the United Kingdom, which had occurred, uh, which had occupied Egypt since 1882, 1882 till 1952. So that's 70 years, and also France, they uh, were threatening Egypt. Both were, were wary of rising national sentiment in territories under their control throughout the Arab world and Africa. So, so both uh, uh, England and France didn't want Egypt to become free because all the other colonies might get the ideas of freedom in their brains. The ongoing state of war with Israel also posed a serious challenge. As the free officers increased Egypt's already strong support of the Palestinians. These two issues conflated four years after the revolution when Egypt was invaded by Britain, France, and Israel in the Suez Crisis of 1956. Despite enormous military losses, the war was seen as a political victory for Egypt, especially as it left the Suez Canal in uncontested Egyptian control for the first time since 1875, erasing what was seen as a mark of national humiliation. This strengthened the appeal of the revolution in other Arab and African countries. Wholesale agrarian reform, so land reform and huge industrialization programs were initiated in the first decade and a half of the revolutions in the 1950s and 60s, leading to an unprecedented period of infrastructure building and urbanization. So, in 1952, Egypt had land reform and huge industrial programs, uh, which led to an unprecedented period of infrastructure building. Kentucky's never had infrastructure building or land reform. And revolution, they don't even know democracy. 12% of Kentuckians vote. It's not even close. To, uh, democracy is the majority of the people. No governments in Kentucky... Uh, nobody in the state government is legitimately is, has any dem, uh, does not have dem, democracy. Uh, they are not democratically legitimate. So, by the 1960s, Arab socialism had been a dominant theme, transformed Egypt into a centrally planned economy. Official fear of a Western-sponsored counter-revolution, domestic. Religious extremism, potential communist infiltration, and the conflict with Israel were all cited as reasons, compellingly severe and long-standing restrictions on political opposition and the prohibition of a multi-party system. These restrictions on political activity would remain in place until the presidency of Anwar el-Sadat from 1970 onwards, during which many of the policies of the revolutions were scaled back or reversed. 
George Carlin says they've been trying to reverse the 60s. The 60s was a time of uh, uh, upheaval. So that was a time of, of revolutionary fervor. And uh, Mitt Romney, he was protesting the protesters. That's where Mitt Romney was in the 1960s. Rand Paul, he, he was against the civil rights. He says that the government doesn't have a right to tell a private business not to be racist or discriminatory. So, okay, these restrictions on political activity. The early successes of the revolution encouraged numerous other nationalist movements in other Arab and African countries, such as Algeria and Kenya, which are engaged in anti-colonial struggles against European empires. It also inspired the toppling of existing pro-Western monarchies and governments in the region and the world. Um, or on the continent. The revolution is commemorated each year on Egypt's National Day, the Revolution Day. July 23rd is Egypt's Revolution Day. They have a Revolution Day. We got 4th of July, but we don't talk about revolution. We don't... George Washington wearing powdered wigs. I don't, I don't relate to George Washington. And my German ancestors got here in 1869. 1869. That means we didn't fight in the revolution. We didn't fight in the Civil War. So for anybody that's on my bloodlines to think that they're confederates they're you know first of all you're siding with the traitors to america but they're they're so brilliant they'll wave american flag and a confederate flag without feeling a complete uh like a complete hypocritical dickhead white supremacist piece of shit <laughs> so yeah yeah george washington and he was just taking indian land so simon gertie was fighting with the Indians during the revolution. There was a, a, a white man who was fighting with the Indians, Simon Gertie. So they got a revolution day, January 23rd. Um, in January 1954, the Muslim Brotherhood was outlawed. 1954. So 60 years ago, Muslim Brotherho Brotherhood was not allowed. And it remained an illegal political organization until the revolution of 2011. 2011. Last year, the Egyptian Revolution. It took place following a popular uprising that began on Tuesday, January 25th, 2011. The uprising was mainly a campaign of nonviolent civil resistance, and it featured a series of demonstrations, marches, acts of civil disobedience, and labor strikes. Millions of protesters from a variety of socio economic and religious backgrounds demanded the overthrow of the regime of the Egyptian president Hosni Mubarak. Despite being predominantly peaceful in nature, the revolution was not without violent clashes between security forces and protesters, with at least 846 people killed and 6,000 injured. The uprising took place in Cairo, Alexandria, and other cities in Egypt following the Tunisian Revolution that resulted in the overthrow of the longtime Tunisian president. On February 11th, after weeks of determined popular protest and pressure, Mubarak resigned from office. Grievances of Egyptian protesters were focused on legal and political issues, including police brutality, the state of emergency laws, lack of free elections, and freedom of speech. So these are the reasons why Egypt is having a protest or is having a revolution last year. Police brutality, the state of emergency laws, and martial law, lack of free elections, and freedom of speech. So there's a couple, there's a couple things. There's a police state there. There's a state of emergency, martial law. So they're on lockdown. They don't, they still don't want to be occupied. They don't ever want to be occupied by uh, Egyptian troops or by foreign troops. They want to be free. The lack of free elections. So uh, yeah, elections, democracy, and freedom of speech. Freedom of speech. Uh, uncontrolled corruption and economic issues. So. You know, there's political issues. They didn't have freedoms and they wanted democracy, uh, but also because the uh, economic disparity, which is what all Occupy is about. So in Egypt, you had high unemployment, you had food price inflation, and you had low minimum wages. The primary demands from protest organizers were the end of the Hosni Mubarak regime and the end of emergency law, freedom, justice, a responsive non-military government, and a say in the management of Egypt's resources. Strikes by labor unions added to the pressure on government officials. During the uprising, the capital city of Cairo was described as a war zone, and the port city of Suez 
uh, was the scene of frequent violent clashes. The government imposed a curfew that protesters defied and the police and military did not enforce. The presence of Egypt's Central Security Force is the uh, Central Security Forces police loyal to Mubarak was gradually replaced by largely restrained military troops. In the absence of police, there was looting by gangs and opposition. Sources says that they were instigated by plainclothes police officers. In response, watch groups were organized by civilians to protect the neighborhoods. International response to the protests were initially mixed, though most called for peaceful actions on both sides and moves towards reform. Most Western governments expressed concern about the situation. America has been financing Mubarak for the last 30 years. It was, uh, I think, number two in the list of the most foreign aid that we give to foreign countries. Number one is Israel, and Israel's killing people too. Uh, there's a genocide in Syria that's going on, and America won't do anything about it because of our support of Israel. We also didn't do shit about the Palestinian war, or the Gaza war in 2008, uh, when Israel got scared because a black man was about to become president of the United States, so Israel wants to make sure that they're allowed to use their iron boot uh, against poor Palestinian people whenever the fuck they feel like it. So, most Western governments expressed concern about the situation. Most, many governments issued travel advisories and made attempts to evacuate their citizens from the country. The Egyptian revolution, along with Tunisian events, has influenced demonstrations in other Arab countries, such as Yemen, Bahrain, Jordan, Syria, and Libya. On June 24, 2012, to today... June 24, 2012, the Muslim Brotherhood won the election. There were two main candidates in the election. There was a pro-Mubarak candidate, and then there was um, Morsi or something, but the Muslim Brotherhood. And the election of this candidate saved the revolution. If the other guy would have been voted in, then Mubarak's forces would have got in, and then who, who cared about the revolution? It, <laughs> nothing was accomplished. Um, but the Muslim Brotherho Brotherhood has won, and now they got to confront the SCAF, the military forces who are uh, that have all the power right now, and who, um, you know, are credited with making the country stable. Um, but they dissolved the Muslim Brotherhood Parliament, so they they are undergoing undergoing a a a judicial coup, a coup by judicial decree. So the military pulled a coup, dissolved the parliament, which is like the government or the, the Congress. So there's no people's assembly anymore. And uh, they're sharply curtailing the, the powers of the president. Uh, the way the system should work, at least one thing I can give credit for the U.S. government. We are a military power, and we have lots of operations everywhere. Uh, CIA's got lots of clandestine operations. Uh, but all of those operations come through the White House. So it's the civilians, the military is subordinate to the civilian government, which is, which is how it should be, which makes sense. The politicians argue about the policies, and then you, if you need the dog, you, know, you send the dog out to, to go fight whoever you need to fight. So, so that's three revolutions that Egypt has gone through in the last century. Now, when was the last time Americans had seen a revolution or anything that closely resembles a revolution? 1776? <coughs> 1776 is the last revolution in America. The war ended with an American victory in October 1781, followed by formal British abandonment of any claims to the United States with the Treaty of Paris in 1783. Many fundamental issues of national governance were settled with the ratification of the Constitution in 1788 and it's replaced by the, uh, replaced the, the weaker first attempt to national government in 1781, the Articles of Confederation and Perpetual Union. In contrast to the loose confederation, the Constitution established a strong federated government. The United States Bill of Rights, 1791, comprising the first ten constitutional amendments, quickly followed. It guaranteed many natural rights, which were influential in justifying the revolution and attempted to balance a strong national government with relatively broad personal liberties.